clean sheet. We wanted to absolutely drill down and focus on zombie combat at the core, get everything up in your face and really personal and visceral and make that sort of uh, street level personal struggle. We also wanted to shy away from the more survivor based, the grim and the gritty. You know, our, our heroes aren't survivors, they're thrivers. You know, they run towards the horde and they absolutely thrill in. Zombie slaughter. And we also have uh, a very distinct pulp tone as well. This isn't this isn't a dirge about the ills of story about heroes surviving and fighting against zombies. You know, the zombies are very much the bad guys, humans are very much the good guys, and we uh, empower the player to really thrill in that experience. We're in kind of horror in certain ways of heroes, particularly you know, joke about how, how, how little, you know, uh, how, how, how unafraid they are. Have you ever wondered what would happen if an artist created an original piece of work, sold it to a greasy fat businessman for a fair price and then the businessman not only takes ownership of the art but then says to themselves, bro I could easily make this myself no word of a liar get me. Ah. Well look no further than the case between Techland and Deep Silver over the Dead Island IP. A case of the artist, Techland, being manipulated like a purse string puppet straight out of the Punch and Judy show, being told what to do, how to do it and when to do it by the very skillful and deceitful puppet master known as Deep Silver. You see the original Dead Island was teased way back in 2007 at Gamescon and then officially announced four years later with a cinematic reveal trailer. A trailer that would go down in video game history for its beautiful but brutal depiction of a zombie apocalypse taking over an innocent family's life. We'll talk more about this trailer later on. Fun fact by the way, this trailer actually received backlash for the depiction of a dead child. Like zombies eating zombies? Fine. Zombies getting caught up and beheaded? Fine. Other humans getting eaten alive? Fine. Dead child? Too far. Several months after the reveal trailer, Dead Island was officially released to the PS3 and Xbox 360 on the 6th of September 2011. Met with mostly positive reviews, the game was a commercial success, but critics hit hard at the developers for the amount of bugs in Dead Island plus the lackluster story the game presented. The story in the 3 minute reveal trailer was a thousand times better than the actual story embedded in the game. A story that is infested with go here and go there types of quests with cutscenes few few and far between. Main characters were lazier than Ethan Klein and never wanted to get their hands dirty no matter the occasion. Mate, I've just dropped me pen on the floor and I've got bad bloody knees. You mind grabbing it for us? I'll make it worth your while. Boring main characters and boring stories. That's pretty much Dead Island. I know that's gonna offend some people, but it's true. It's it's a horrible story. Bloody hell, mate. I've just left my 300 MG Edels back at the lighthouse. You mind grabbing it for us? You're the only one that can do it. Dead Island has its fair share of problems, but there's one thing the developers mastered, and that was the tone of the game. Let's start with the environment. Set in a fictitious island of Benoit, Dead Island captures the happy vacation lifestyle. An enormous fancy hotel known as the Royal Palms Resort dominates the centre of the island. It's a place where the excited tourists can dine at, sleep under clean fresh white silk covers and take the edge off in a relaxing indoor pool made for families to dive into and enjoy whilst they wash away any remaining stress attached to them from their everyday life back at home such as taxes, taxes and taxes and taxes. Taxes are awful. I hate taxes. Hey, you made this product and you did it all by yourself. We want half of the money though. Why? I don't know. Where is it going? I don't know. Pools are littered outside the hotel. 
wooden bungalows coated with a fine layer of thatch in case the nearby pools. For those who want to be more involved in the culture life that soaks through the island of Benoit, the wooden bungalows are a great choice. But if that's not enough for you, you can always head down to the sea where the scorching sun beams down, the sand is hotter than Madison beer and the crystal blue sea welcomes you with open arms. Benoit Island is truly a great place to get lost in. There's no better place to stay than Benoit Island. The only problems you'll ever have while staying here is running out of sunscreen or overdosing on Sex on the Beach cocktails. Well, they would be your only problems if you currently wasn't in the middle of a zombie apocalypse where the only thing that wants you is a zombie and all they want from you is your meat. Now, Benoit Island is a place where the pools are drenched with the infected's blood. No longer a place to cool off, but now a place to store the dead zombies. The bungalows ooze with the scent of rotting flesh, as everyone in the bungalows is either infected or on the verge of turning. And any tourists that are still alive no longer use the bungalows as a place to take shelter from the sun, it's no longer a place to relax, it's no longer a place to have a laugh and joke about the political and economical state of the world right now. Shout out Jaden Smith. <laughs> Instead, the bungalows have been converted to a hideout from the undead. A place to weep and let the despair pour out. A place where you are constantly on edge and any noise causes a fight or flight response in your system. The hotel serves as a morgue instead of a place for people to stay and relax. Room after room filled with body after body and every corpse you come across is another victim whose last moments were filled with utter terror. The hotel is no longer a peaceful place. All you can hear now is the grunts of the infected as they rip off the flesh of another victim. A place that once smelt like lavender and roses is now a place infused with the stench of rotting flesh. There are no maids to clean up this mess as they are either dead or they have quit due to not getting paid enough to deal with this situation, which I don't blame them. One, not enough money, and two, your health insurance probably doesn't cover getting infected by zombies, so they probably made the right choice by leaving. I don't blame them. The only decent place left in Benoit Island is the sea. The sun is still shining, the sand is still hotter than Madison beer. Mm. I'm not a simp. The water, while it's not crystal blue, is still blue enough to wave you in. However, the sea is no longer a place for you to enjoy. It reminds you of the very fact that you are trapped within the island with no way of escaping. You are constantly on the lookout for planes or boats that you could flag down to save you from this nightmare. But no boat ever surfaces and no plane ever lands. But no island, a place once used for people to escape to, is now a place where people want to escape from and that ladies and gentlemen is how you create not only an amazing poem i might say so myself but the perfect atmosphere for a zombie apocalypse game and that's why i love dead island one's atmosphere it doesn't change the conditions the sun is still out the tide still comes in and out the hotel is still t standing tall in all its glory and from the outside you will suspect nothing is wrong but on the inside, hell awaits you. Techline could have been cheap and said, okay, bro, what we're gonna do, yeah? We're gonna make this game rainy, bro. Make it rain, yeah? Loads of rain, right? We got that down. Make everything look down. Look, Make it look terrible. Got that, right? Make it so dark that people know that something bad has happened. And maybe we should add some music like, uh, what's that guy called? Beethoven, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beethoven, what's that song? Uh, Moonlight Sonata, yeah, yeah. Bang that in the background. Make it really dark and depressing. They could have done that. That, but he didn't. Benoit doesn't look run down or even abandoned to a certain extent. If you had a baby wipe and some bleach, I'm sure you could get the place looking like it was before the apocalypse. It doesn't look that bad. That's why the atmosphere is perfect in this game. It doesn't try to force a stereotypical zombie apocalypse atmosphere down our throats. Instead, it gives us a glimpse of a more realistic version of a zombie apocalypse 
atmosphere. A zombie apocalypse where the humans are still alive and the zombies are still alive and it's a balance between them. No one has truly dominated. The humans haven't conquered the zombies and the zombies haven't really conquered the humans yet. It's a weird in-between period where both are living together. Dead Island 2, whilst you might argue, has the same premise behind it, a paradise gone to hell. You know, LA is the place where everyone wants to go to achieve their dreams. So whilst the premise might be the same, it's a paradise gone to hell, the sun's still shining. LA is a place where people want to achieve their dreams and goals and they want to live in because that's where everyone lives in and, and that's where you can become successful and rich and famous. The difference is in the colour of the game and the characters in the game. Cheesy corny characters that are so used to the zombie apocalypse that it's no longer something to be concerned about. Instead, it's a joke and the threat of an infected mutilating them or their loved ones is nothing more than a ha <laughs> that's funny moment. The seriousness, the brutality and the rawness of the first game has been deleted and replaced with a pulp action type attitude where the infected are more of a nuisance than a threat. There's no terror behind this, there's no sense of fear in this game. The streets might be run down and covered in blood but it's nothing more than a minor inconvenience in this game. There's no tension, there's no panic, there's no threat, there's no sense of helplessness. All that has gone and has been replaced with sunshine and rainbows. Because zombies wanting to rip your limbs off until you look like a chicken nugget is nothing more than a funny moment. Just look at the colour grading from Dead Island 1 and compare it to Dead Island 2. Notice the more intense colours in Dead Island 2 and notice how it looks like the developers crank the saturation levels to 100%. This for me ruins the immersion of a zombie apocalypse. If I was in a zombie apocalypse, I wouldn't remember it as a bright, colourful time period in my life. Instead, I would remember it as Techland envisioned Dead Island 1. Grey, gloomy, dull, with colours desaturated. It's not something you want to remember and it's not something you want to reminisce about. But in Dead Island 2, yay! Zombie apocalypse, we're all dead and we could die too. Woohoo! Fun times! This this is where I believe Techland and Deep Silver's first creative visions started to clash with each other. Techland wanted a serious game and Deep Silver wanted a more out the zombie game. A zombie game that was mm, not so serious and could be fun. Techland wanted a certain feature in the game but Deep Silver didn't and after many disagreements Deep Silver decided to drop Techland from the project and instead get Jaeger to do it. The biggest mistake Techland made wasn't disobeying Deep Silver's orders, but instead giving the IP of Dead Island to Deep Silver as part of their contractual agreement. This meant now Deep Silver could make Dead Island games without the original developers, You're fired. and that's what they did. First Jaeger, then Sumo, and finally Dan Buster Studios. And if you want to know why Dead Island 2 ran through so many developers and why it went through such a chaotic development hell, I would recommend a fantastic video by a great YouTuber, honestly, he's one of the best YouTubers I've ever watched, and his name's Thea, honestly, he's a great YouTuber, he made a video about the development hell of Dead Island 2, link in the description or at the end of the video, check it out after this video, honestly, it's a fantastic video. If I say so myself, I'm being as humble as possible, it's amazing. Deep Silver never wanted Dead Island 2 to look like this, or this, or this. Instead, they wanted it to look like this. Brightly coloured, cheerful, and not scary at all. This is a zombie apocalypse minus the apocalypse. There's nothing scary about Dead Island 2. Nothing gets you on edge. There's no characters that make you have a connection with them. Nothing in this game feels authentic. It doesn't have the same vision as the old one. And I think it should. Dead Island was a game that was never meant to be taken lightly. It was designed to scare you. It was de designed to keep you on edge. And it was designed to have those moments where you just run. The perfect example of this is the first mission. The first mission of Dead Island is you in a hotel. There's no zombies around, but there's a sense of 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 eeriness around it because everyone's abandoned the area so to speak and you can go to a room to your left i believe and that's where you see the family from the trailer 
dead and then you're thinking well there must be zombies around here right so yet then you go into rooms but there's no zombies there's no zombies in that first part until you have to run from them right and it's just that tension building of thinking there might be a zombie in this room thinking there might be a zombie in the bathroom but there's not going outside oh there might be zombies there nope go back inside is the zombies there nope there's no zombies there and then you have to run from the zombies you can't fight them you have to run Dead Island 1 was intentionally made to scare you. It wasn't meant to be a funny game or have funny moments. It was a game built around jump scares, tension, and making you terrified of zombies. And this also can be seen when you go to bungalows or explore different areas and you open doors and there's a zombie literally programmed to jump at you and attack you as soon as that door opens. That's the developers intentionally wanting to scare you. Because why? It's a zombie game. Oh, really? They want to scare you. And that was their intention to make it scary. And those little zombies that run, not, they're not little, <laughs> but them zombies that scream at you whilst fully sprinting at you like Usain Bolt, they are terrifying till this day, right? I run from them. I, I'm terrified of them. It was intentionally designed to be scary. Dead Island 2 isn't. Dead Island 2 was designed to be the most colourful, brightest, saturated zombie game you've ever played. The closest we'll ever get to original Dead Island 2 is Dying Light. Seeing as that was the first zombie game Techland made without Deep Silver's controlling demeanour and they probably added elements they was going to add into Dead Island 2 into Dying Light. And even better, Techland now own the OP, what? or IP, not OP, <laughs> IP for Dying Light so they can make them the way they want to and they cannot lose the rights to that game and whether the publishers want them or not it doesn't really matter they own Dying Light so they can make it however they want which is brilliant well done Techland you learn from your mistakes this is how it should have been for Dead Island 2 but instead the publishers had other ideas they got power and money hungry and tried to run off and make Dead Island 2 successful without the original artist which even if it does well commercially commercially it's going to be hard to recoup 10 years worth of funding seeing as Dead Island 2 was being developed as early back as in 2012. Does that make sense? I don't think so. But it was being developed in 2012, whether it was just design phase, whether it was just a basic planning, whether it was just conception art. What did he say? Or concept art, sorry. It doesn't matter. It was still being developed back then. People still had to get paid back then. So 10 years worth of funding is going to be hard to get back with one game. I don't see him actually getting all that money back and if they do i don't think there'll be a massive profit margin this all could have been avoided if the businessmen did what they do best which is business and got out of the way of what the artist does best which is art and if you want further proof of deep silver ruining the tone of dead island 2 then look no further than dead island 2's original trailer as well as the recent trailer compared to dead island 1's original cinematic trailer the proof is in the pudding. The tone is completely different. One is paradise in hell with no hope of escaping, whilst the other is a paradise in hell, but it's not really that bad and it's kind of chill around here to be honest. The tones are polar opposite. Now to end this video, let's be real with each other, let's have a heart to heart, and I'll be quick, but I just want to say this, this is not me hating on Dead Island 2, I said this at the start of the video, it's not me hating on Dead Island 2, I actually think Dead Island 2 would be much better than Dead Island 1, gameplay wise, I think it will dominate Dead Island 1, and I think it will smash it, story wise, it will dominate, if Dead Island 2 had the same tone as Dead Island 1, I think it would absolutely blow Dead Island 1 out of the water, Dead Island 1 is not really a fantastic game, it's a good game, but it's not fantastic it it didn't live up to the potential it could have right and whether that was a lack of experience from Techland or due to creative visions clashing or deep silver's control and demeanor I don't know we no one knows the true answer but I think Dead Island 2 will actually be better than Dead Island 1 I mean it's not hard to top Dead Island 1 I know it sounds like I'm hating on Dead Island 1 now but Dead Island 2 has the potential to be better than Dead Island 1 I think it has the potential for gameplay wise to add in some new gameplay mechanics which look insane. They look like they've added more cutscenes into the game. They looks like they, It looks like there's an actual story to the game now so 
I think Dead Island 2 will generally be better than Dead Island 1, but the one thing that's missing from Dead Island 2 that was in Dead Island 1 is the tone. And I think that's really important for a zombie game like Dead Island, for a franchise like Dead Island, seeing as that's how it started and that's how it was meant to be. Games that change tone usually don't do well, and you can look at Saints Row as an example. First one, second one, gangster games. Third one, ah, we're slipping out of the gangster. Fourth one, not really gangster. Superhero game, doesn't really do well. And then they reboot it years and years later, where you get a bunch of Starbucks employees as the main characters, and the game absolutely flops. What the hell? It, it, it happens when you change the tone of a game, right? And I don't know if that's going to be Dead Island's fate. It could be. But let me know what you think. Do you think Dead Island 2 will be better than Dead Island 1? Let me know. I want to hear you people in the comments. Have a discussion with people in the comments. Get talking. At. Make some friends. Jesus. Anyway, I'm going. I've rambled too long. Bye. Like and subscribe. I don't care anymore. Bye.